Hello and welcome to Non-Stop Wrestling Chat. My name is Barry and this is your Monday Night Raw Watch Along. This is the third watch along. I think this is just now January 25th, the one right after the Royal Rumble. Um, we're 13 settings in just now. Repo Man's just coming out of the car. Our beard's all over the place. <laughs> just for... Just finished in the gym, guys, so that's why it's all messed up. And I'm just getting some stuff packed away. Oh, long day at work today. Oh, Repo Man's got Macho Man's hat. The Royal Rumble Part 1 and 2, it was a long watch along to make, honestly. It was, it was actually pretty... Pretty long to watch long. This is a title scheme, screen, which I I love the intro to Monday Night Raw here. We're going to jump to two minutes in, so it's actually 203, 204, 205. And Watchman Randy Savage versus The Repo Man. Tonight we've got Kamala versus Brooklyn Brawler, obviously the Watch Show against Repo. <coughs> the Royal Rumble Report with Mean Gene Auckland will probably skip over. And then we've got a hell of a match between Ric Flair and Mr. Perfect. Loser leaves WWE. There's Repo got the, the hat on. Not gonna lie, I probably would have took much from Man's hat as well. <laughs> Much man's attacked. It's got like a black and colourful thing on with green boots. Here I go yawning again. <laughs> I think I'm going to need to start recording these earlier in the day. Just checking out the channel there, seeing how things are going. Pretty, pretty good. Views are up, obviously, which is pretty, pretty good. Just love seeing Macho Man, especially see seeing Macho Man in Raw. It's kind of weird because he was obviously such a big part of the Monday Night Wars, so seeing him in Raw was is pretty weird. Never liked Repo Man really, so I never got like Reggie. Oh, you years of wrestling, working hard, getting where you are, and then uh, you're the Repo Man. Same could probably be same for a lot of wrestling characters, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm actually recording this on Friday night guys, but um, it's 10 past 7, so after this I'll be hitting the hay because I'm up at 3 o'clock tomorrow morning, and for Smackdown, that'll be for that'll be on Saturday, then we've got the Royal Rumble that'll be up on Saturday, and then this you'll get on Sunday, um, when you are watching this I'll actually be doing a fitness test, so um, I've got a fitness test for my... 556 mile cycle for next year um, and it's a fitness test that I have to get out of the way so that I can start going into a little bit of more kind of developed training Macho Man is just hopping around this ring like hell isn't he like I don't understand why they didn't give this man like a bigger like clearly he could still go I definitely put him in there and he would have had a killer of a match or like Brett or something like for the title or give him the title again the guy's really good
always hated because at this point when he starts to head into commentary, it was just kind of like <laughs> the way he went to WCW is definitely WCW used Macho Man a lot better than what WWE did. Did you like Repo Man? I, I, I said I never got into him. I was just wondering if any of you guys out there liked him, enjoyed him, whatever. Because he just did nothing for me. Honestly, one of the reasons I didn't really like him is I felt like all these matches just dragged in. Actually, this will be the last video that the Halloween guy's in. <laughs> He's out of the picture as of tomorrow, which will be Sunday for you guys, because this is getting filmed a little bit earlier. I finished it the gym and I was like, you know what, I'm going to come back up and watch some Raw. I was like, ah, Raw be continued. This match just isn't really anything, I don't know. It's, if you're actually watching it, look who's for the, um, seven, eight minutes exactly. Just nothing's really good is happening. Macho Man's doing his fair share of stuff here, but nothing really great is happening. I always, honestly, always did think that Repo just wasn't really anything special. Going for a pin, two. That was Repo, two. Not sure there. This match just hasn't captured my attention at all. This match just isn't, honestly isn't doing anything for me at all. <laughs> kind of struggling to get through this one. I don't know why they gave Repo Man like such... Like going against Macho Man, but like... Like he said, two close calls against Macho Man, like you, you literally, you wouldn't think he would have anything. There's much of man coming back. Oh, 
Jeg også lyst til at gøre tabu her, ja. Are you guys enjoying this match? Because this is fucking dire for me. Big elbow for Mocho. One, two, three. Thought he was going to kick out there. Just <laughs> don't need to happen. I've actually got Twitter up in front of me here, and what's just popped up is a WCW Macho Hulk Hogan just attacking like earthquake and stuff like that. And he's got his hat back. That was a. It was cool, but obviously, seeing Macho Man jumping around and stuff like that, but it just wasn't a really good match at all. <laughs> oh, what are you doing in the ring? Oh, promo for WrestleMania. Yeah, we'll skip along to the next match because these are just going to be like promos. So we've got Kamala versus the Brooklyn Brawler. Kamala was a guy I never got into either. I, I like some of his work, but he's never a guy I really got into. Same with Brooklyn Brawler. You know, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I don't think I've really sat and enjoyed a lot of Kamala's matches like I've maybe seen seven, eight, ten at most, like nothing major so I'll probably go and have a little look at that more over the weekend Like I know a lot of people more about the network. Um, I know they're more about oh kick from Kamala was pretty cool. I know a lot of people more about the network being I don't know, a wee bit like either I think a lot of people just more about the network to be honest with you. <laughs> but the more about the network, like the price of it, the content, the etc etc, like having to fucking you have to go to in ring and like find the WCW content but I, I, I think it's cool for the price honestly you get loads of the classic DVDs like if I was to buy like the tagged classic DVDs where there's like the two in it at £20 each for me to get the ones that I have there like my fingertips would be hundreds and hundreds of pounds yeah I obviously own them um, also you just can't deal with changing them over every single time get you know like I love to be able to finish a pay per view and just start something the next pay per view or something. For the longest time, I didn't know how to skip correctly. Like I, I really wasn't proficient at it, and I've been practicing it. So that's why what I've been doing recently is I've been doing weights, and in between every set of weights. I do like a minute or two of skipping, um, and now I'm, I can do it 15, 20 minutes straight. Could could probably push it to 30, 
quite a few people in the arse about it. <laughs> um, just straight of it, which is enjoyable for me. I don't know what Kamala's trying to do to you. Just stand on his back. I wish there's somebody like that would stand on my back. I would just snap, probably. <laughs> I was actually thinking about doing a watch along about um, ICW as well. So I was going to the ones that are on the WWE network do like a watch along of the indie matches. Kamala just. Picking up the one now. <laughs> then we get obviously the Royal Rumble report, which is um, me and Jean talk like breaking down the Rumble, obviously. So, what we'll do is we'll skip by that and we'll just go to Ric Flair versus Mr. Perfect loser leaves Raw because this is an exquisitely great match um, and I recommend you get it watched while we're doing this so uh, we're at 23, 19, 20, 20, 23, 21, 23, 22 Ric Flair's uh, coming in the ring <laughs> I'm really excited to see this match again because I've not seen it for a good couple of years um, but it is a great match this Raw has been pretty pretty bad but it's all just leading up to this match so I can kind of understand why it's been pretty bad Did any of you, who do you prefer to be perfect and flair? Because I don't know. Because <laughs> I struggle all the time trying to try and pick somebody out of those two. Because the both of them are such great, um, are, are just great wrestlers. Like, I've probably seen more flair, uh, but perfect WCW I've seen quite a lot. Uh, I don't know, guys. You would. <laughs> Perfect's a guy you could just watch wrestle anywhere, but. Really felt Mr. Perfect was just in WWF at like a weird period, and that's why, like, I did prefer most of these matches in WCW compared to what you had in WWF.
kind of wondering what was going through. I wonder when, I always forget when Mr. Perfect actually left WWF to go to WCW. I don't think it was long after this anyway, I think maybe a year or two. This is actually, this Raw has been the worst one so far, so from the the ones that we've had, but this match is obviously saving this Raw. I think as well, see with the Raws here, like now they are so, like, they're only an hour, right? So, having them... Having them so just an hour, you could have like, like the Macho Man versus Repo Man, Kamala versus Brooklyn Ball. They weren't really anything special. They were just passing, right? But you could literally have those type of matches of like passing or filler matches or like just to advance some story or make somebody look good quickly, and then have like a big great match like this, and it will save the episode. So you're kind of like, ugh, bad, but we've saved the episode with this, so. That's what I think. I would even prefer Raw to even drop down to like an hour and a half. But it's, it's, the two hours, obviously, you could work that as well, but an hour and a half, you're going to only get meaningful stuff in TV. And if they work that over the hour and a half Raw, hour and a half Smackdown, and if they have filler content, promos, Stuff like that, they can do that on social. I'd work them together simultaneously. Like, if there's a match on, jump onto Facebook and see what's happening there. Because really, the commentators are just background noise because you're too busy watching the match. Especially nowadays, I try and not even listen to the commentators. Hopefully, I'll look Staggered. <laughs> Slap from Flea like perfect there, that was pretty. Flea's got perfect hair, throws him over the top roll. Flea rolls out underneath. Chair. Like wheelchair, ref tape jumps off the apron and takes it off him. Flair and Herbert are pushing each other. Oh, Flair's cheeks nearly out. <laughs> Arse cheek, I mean. <laughs> I love when Mr. Perfect done that one, like, so Flair there just threw him into the, the rope and he went right up and out to the outside, I love when he done that. Oh, Perfect's got a bit of colour on him, he's got a bit of blood. How? Yeah, he has. He's got blood, eh? Oh. So we're at 31 12, 31 13, 31 14. That was actually pretty. Came back from the bay, break and it's picked up a lot. <laughs> So 
It's a fire brigade, guys, if you're wondering what the, the noise is. <laughs> really cool back and forth match. Obviously, Flair's not busted open because he would be... He'd be like, that's seen from The Shining. But, uh, Perfect's busted. Oh, Perfect's rolled up one. Ah, still one count from Perfect to Flair. Realised I was <laughs> not saying anything there. Um, I saw Perfect's getting over, got his. Oh, it was one count again. So when it's a great wrestling match, you just. you get drew right into it. You just sit like. standing out all the time. So you go watch like. some of the old Steamboat stuff. Fucking. For me, the one that really. F draws me in a lot the first time I really got it wasn't the first time I got Megan into a match but I was old enough like what was I like 14 um, and I sat and I watched No Way Out 2006 Take a versus Angle oh, I literally got sucked right into that match completely It's still one of my favourite matches to this day. Roll up from Flair to Perfect. Two count. Just so weird seeing Flair in a raw ring at this time. Like it doesn't look right at all. So Flair was at outside, but it's a perfect slipped him back, suplexed him back in the ring. One, one count. Really a good back and forth match here. Sleeper, Flair's got a sleeper on perfect. So even though you know how this ends, sometimes you forget and you just like get drawn into the match. Which is one of the best ways to be. I always try and, like if I'm going to watch, even if I know what happens, I try and just kind of put out the ending in my mind and just enjoy the match. So he's doing the, coming back, one, two, coming back. Perfect's fighting back. Oh, Flair went right off the top tumbrico. Does his flop. Oh, what's that? They went off the ropes and perfect jump up to hit like a, you know, like a weird clothesline or something, but caught him like in a sleeper and fell straight. Fell straight down and then like, now they're like doing like a pin count thing, which is weird. I 
I'm still going to say the reason Flair had to leave was because um, terrific Terry Taylor uh, kind of had the same look as him. Because, you know, terrific Terry Taylor was obviously the... Um, yeah, he, that's why Flair had to leave. <laughs> Flair just fits better in WCW. And that's the truth, honestly. And a figure four, perfect screaming for help. Still in the figure four. There's obviously holding on to ropes. <laughs> Putting on a hell of a match, man. Honestly, don't think I've watched this match in maybe three years. Look, mm. was up top, perfect's got him. Threw him off. Will he be continued? No! <laughs> so we're at 39.08, 39.09, 39.10, 39.11. Just coming up for the ending of the match, obviously, I think. Perfect selling that leg. Ric Flair's went and got something out of his pocket. Looks like it's... Oh, he's... Um, knee pad. It's like knuckles. Up perfect with it. Slipping the back in on the cheeky. Perfect looks to be out cold. Big elbow from Rick to Perfect. Oh, Perfect's leg was on the rope. Kick out from Perfect. They're just going at that cut. For this looking jack right here. Also on Friday, um just there, a video already up. You click on the profile, you'll be able to go see the top 10 Survivor Series moments. A few good ones in it. Um, let me know what yours are in the comments in that video. And also on this video, let me know how you would rate this match. Because it, it's it got emotion, got passion, got wrestling, got story. It's really a great match. Shot from Perfect to Flair. Backdrop. He did not hit that punch at all. The other just took it, but <laughs> there's Fleur. Then he's flipped to the outside. He's ran up on top turnbuckle, punch to the face, and perfect <laughs> to kick out. Seven, forty-one, forty-nine, 
41, 51, 41, 52, 53, 54, that's our timings. Two close calls there. Superplex, one, two, three. Perfect picked up the win. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen as well, but honestly. So Perfect's picked up the win there. Flair, Stephen Raw. Hayden shouting and swearing. <laughs> Well, that was a good draw, guys. Honestly, it was... I know it was mostly just the ending match that made it good because the first matches were dire. But um, that was a really good draw. Really fun. See, that's what I mean. Like, if they cut it shorter, they'd be able to turn it around. I like that. Um, having, like, a great match and a couple of filler contents, a couple of just progressive stories that don't really get much. But that really was a great match. Um, yeah, that was great. Anyway, guys, that's the watch along done for today. Thanks for enjoying my wrestling content this weekend. And I'll see you here Tuesday for... Tuesday? Yeah, I think it's Tuesday for Monday Night Raw review. The actual up-to-date Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. And um, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and that wee notification bell.